Hey developers, today I'm going to show you how you can set up ESLint and Prettier on your Nuxt app. And actually, I'm going to show you one step more if you have TypeScript, how to get it working as well. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. We'll take a look at this Nuxt app and we'll get started. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book, which I'll put a link in the in the description. And also, uh, Udemy is having their $10 sale. There's only two days left. You can get it for like $9.99. There's a lot of amazing courses on here. I really like Dylan Israel's 100 front end interview question challenge. Some of my favorite courses will be in the link in the description below. So if you want to help out the channel, I'll get a few bucks if you end up buying any of these courses. I really appreciate it. Just make sure you just click on any of those links and take a look. All right, so this is a Nuxt app I've been creating. It's actually called devbootcamp.io. Um, it's uh, it's in the works. I'll have more information about that in the future. But I noticed as I was setting it up that I was running into a few problems. And uh, I wanted to go through that. First, if you don't know, um, there is something called ESLint. And that is a way you can lint your JavaScript files. And what that does is that it'll detect problems and changes um, th that you can fix. And uh, you can set it up with Prettier too so that it auto fixes a lot of these issues that your linter will come up with. So let's see, uh, let's see how that works. I'll give you a little demonstration then I'll show you how you can set it up. So for example, uh, on this project, I have this ESLint plugin view installed. You can see from this webpage here, I know it's probably a little bit hard to see. But you can actually set up plugin rules to depend on uh, to essentially tell you how you should structure your program. And these are these are rules that that view recommends. So there is the plugin view base, plugin view essential, uh, plugin view strongly recommended, and plugin view recommended. So right now I have the plugin view recommended on, and you can see here all these rules here are are part of it. So if I wanted to like look up one of these rules, I don't know, let's say there's a props one in here, I think. So I went ahead and found one here. Look, view required default props. So this plugin is included with the view strongly recommended and the view recommended. And so I have view recommended installed. And it's saying the rule requires default value to be set for each prop that are not marked with required. So if you don't mark it with required, you have to put a default value. So let's take a look at our app here. And you see right here, I have this required true right here. If I delete it, then I get this little squiggly line underneath. And you can see if I highlight, it says prop user required default value to be set. And that's part of the view required default propped. So if I save it, my app will get reloaded here. And it's just a warning. So the it'll actually still work if I refresh the page here. It's not an error. But it'll give me a warning in my console that prop user required default value to be set. So that's good to know. So if I put it back, I'll undo it here. Um, I go back, scroll down, I have no errors. There's nothing wrong and it's good. So you can see these are all the different like required types. And this is essentially if you leave this ESLint plugin on, then you will get uh, messages, either warnings or errors will allow, which will cause your app to not even load and this will uh, tell you what the problem is. So it's, so it's really uh, it's really help you with your coding and how to create your view app. But when, one other nice thing is that we have Prettier installed. So let's say if I come back up here and I just change this, you see right away it has a red squiggly line. That's actually an error. If I look at it, it says replace message with message. So it's like, it's telling us that it needs to have a space between the two and there, here's the ESLint rule that that uh, expected one space after the double curly brackets. So what's cool, if I save it, it automatically reformats it for me and there's no type uh, error involved. It actually did two spaces, um, but that's fine. So it works fine. If I refresh it, looks good. So that that that's a really cool thing. It, could, it helps auto format your stuff. Let's see if I just do one space, if it'll fix it, yep. Looks like it's putting in two spaces. Um, 
multiple spaces. So I'll have to do some configuration, but for the most part, it works. I put two spaces here right in the front when I corrected it. So cool. So let's see how we can get this working. So first thing you need to do is I have, I already installed this. So I'll show you. So you have to do the NPM install and then you sell, save it as a dev de dependency and install, I mean, install Babel ESLint, ESLint, ESLint config prettier, ESLint loader, ESLint plugin, ESLint plugin prettier, and prettier. <laughs> so you have to have all those installed. And if you don't remember those, I, I, I'll include a link here to the Nux.js guides. It actually has under development tools. It shows you exactly everything you need to install. And then you have to have that installed. If you're doing TypeScript, there's this, you have to do in, install one more library. It's the Nux.js ESLint config TypeScript. So you just need to install this one as well. And then uh, you have to do a little bit of configuration. So what I did is, well, first you have to create an ESLint file. So create an ESLint rc.js file inside the root folder. And then this is where all your data, is, this is where all your settings are gonna be. So you're gonna have a root equals true. You're gonna set up an environment, browser equals true, node equals true. And the parse options, uh, if you're using, not using TypeScript, you use Babel ESLint. If you are using TypeScript, this is one thing that threw me off when I first did this. I had to change the parser to TypeScript ESLint parser. And then for rules, this is where you can put in required um, view files, had your custom rules here. So I just put in prettier, prettier error. So it tries to do, this is essentially everything you need to do to um, for prettier in the rules. And you have to plug in this view for under extends here. We're gonna add in, this is ESLint config TypeScript. This is just for TypeScript. This is where we're gonna put in our plugins. Prettier view, prettier recommended and view recommended. So this is, I didn't put view strongly recommended. So I just put view recommended. And then uh, if you're not using Nux, uh, if you're not using TypeScript, then you, would, you wouldn't use this Nux one right here and you would put an ESLint recommended. And then there's this URL here to, um, to remind me if I ever wanna add that in there. Then I'll need to go, after you save this file here and once again, this will be this article will be linked in the description below, so you guys can take a look at it. You can go to the Nux config, and this will set it up for Webpacks. Every time you save in your Webpack, it'll it'll run your ESLint rules, and if there's an error, you'll see it on the screen. So uh, you will run ESLint and save. So this is, says that the context is dev or context is client. Obviously, you don't want to do it in production. Then we're going to do these model rules push. We're going to force the pre exclude node modules, and then the loader is ESLint loader, and it's gonna look for JavaScript viewer TypeScript files. And so that's that's essentially it here. Now to actually get prettier to actually to format on save in Visual Studio Code, you gotta do one more thing. And that is, so you should have your Nux config configured so every time you save when you're running uh, in dev, in your dev environments that it automatically ESLints for you. You should have the ESLint RC file like I just went through. And the last thing is to look at settings.json file. So if you go either edit preferences or file preferences settings, or if you go control shift P, I think it's like command shift P and Mac, you can open your settings.json. And then you wanna add some ESLint rules. So the first thing I would do is go in and look for your editor format on save. This will actually, if you have this as true, it will just normally save um, and do the prettier just with inside Visual Studio Code, but we don't want Visual Studio Code to do it. We want to do it inside uh, of a plugin. So uh, what do you need to do? I forgot to mention, make sure you go to extensions and install the ESLint, this extension right here, this ESLint um, extension. And then once this is installed, you can see here it's installed on my, on mine, uh, then you want, and also I would recommend to do Vitor too. That's a, a really good view. It does view highlighting and everything. Once you have both of those installed, then go back into your settings JSON file and add these lines. So um, I first, like I said, make sure your edit format on save is on false. And then on your ESLint, I put auto fix on save true. So this will make sure, as long as you have the ESLint plugin installed, it will fix on every time you save. 
and then you uh, put the options for the extension for HTML, JavaScript, Vue, and JSX. And then you have to do the validation. So I would do HTML, Vue, JavaScript, JavaScript, React, if you're using React, of course. And then view validation template for Vitor, just make sure that's false. And that's pretty much it. By the way, if you're wondering, the I always get this question every single video. I'm using Synthwave 84 as my, as my theme inside VS Code. So make sure you install the ESLint extension, the Vitor extension, and then set these inside your settings JSON. And then it should all work. So like I said, it should start um, try to auto formatting when you save. It'll uh, fix all your files for you. To an extent, you might have to still tweak it. Um, yeah, so that's that's about as easy as it is. Um, see here, just auto formatted there. And uh, yeah, so I would just try that out, guys. Let me know in the description below how that works for you. This might, like I said, I'm using TypeScript here, so it looks a little funny, but this has worked for me. I'm still kind of playing around with it. I'm still editing the prettier settings, um, making sure everything matches, but so far I'm really impressed with it all. So thanks for watching. Take care.